All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to the select board meeting for Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. I would like to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So our first point of order is I would like to reorganize the select board. So I will nominate the uh, sitting <laughs> chair. <laughs> for the dead stuff. Oh, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Did you get? It just seems a little awkward that yeah. there's okay, nobody else on, here. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's go. Oh, it's outside. Yeah. Outside hanging out with the chief of police. I'm fashionably late. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't fix the ticket for him, did you? <laughs> Gave me a ticket. Okay. All right. All right. right so, so back to our uh, agenda item. So we are going to the reorganization of the select board. I will entertain a motion. So I nominate the sitting vice chair, or the, the sitting chair, uh, Brendan Tedstone. Second that. For what position? For, for chair. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Are there any other motions? Okay, hearing that, I would like to call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? And abstentions. It seems like that carries. Um, so I would like to- Congratulations, ah, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. So now you're the chair. So now I'm the chair, it's great. Okay. So I would like to nominate- I got a couple issues with your board. So you're out of line <laughs> and you're out of order. <laughs> we're not recognized. <laughs> <laughs> I shall remain out of order. <laughs> Not that was one of my most <laughs> famous lines ever. I like that. Uh, uh, so I would like to nominate Mr. Catino as the vice chair to the uh, to the select board. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Wait. Aye. No. Are there any other nominations? Okay, I hear none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? So that carries. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Okay. Be is he recognized yet? I don't care. He is the chair emeritus. <laughs> um, all right, so next is our volunteer recognition. Your public forum. No, I'm sorry, public forum. I already screwed up. Uh, so the residents are invited to share their ideas, opinions, or ask questions. Is there anyone in the public that has any questions? Please. Um, I, I would like to. Uh just want to talk about um, something Sustainable Green Committee uh, came forward a number of years ago with great acclaim and accomplished a lot for this town and it is now defunct and I would very much like to reactivate the Green Sustainable Green Committee I'm willing to serve I had actually applied uh, over a year ago and just got the form letter back I did not hear anything else just that form notice that you know you, my application has been accepted and I am willing to get involved in a big way um, and, and, and come on even to chair it uh, and I think you know it's very interesting to me that actually in our town report we had listed with John Mosher as the Board of Selectmen representative <laughs> yeah. you know uh, we all know John hasn't been yeah. on the select board for a while uh, so and I think uh, given climate change and uh, everything else that we should be doing this Hopkinton I mean Hopkinton Holliston and Sherburne both now have a part-time sustainability officer uh, on staff in town uh, I talked with an eighth grader I substitute in the public schools I talked with an eighth grader today who said is it really true that the world is going to be ending in 11 years of the intergovernmental uh, panel on climate change report and was very concerned. So I think we owe this to our children, our grandchildren, to do whatever we can to Absolutely. create a sustainable Hopkinton, and I'm willing to serve in that capacity. Mr. Kamala. Through the chair, thank you so much for stepping forth. Um, please, if you may, uh, give Maria your contact information. We will contact you tomorrow and then update you on the status of that. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. So, who should I give my info to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. 
So before we go any further, I would like to recognize Mary Jo Lafrenier, our newest uh, select board member, and offer our uh, wholehearted con uh, condolences, but uh, congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Thank welcome you. to the board. <laughs> we're, we're glad to have you here. It was fun. Welcome. Uh, and I want to apologize for being a little late. I took a header coming out of the house, <laughs> which sometimes happens, and um, so I'm, I'm a little slow moving right now. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay, but I'm but it was all a surprise. Right. <laughs> well, we're glad you're all right. Um, so volunteer recognition, Mr. Kamala, you have the yes yes on the open forum. Uh, open forum, yeah. Through the chair. Uh, yes. Maria Glynn, she's always busy. May you please join? I know this topic, Mr. Chair, is. Uh, scheduled for later during the agenda. However, because of Maria's schedule, I thought I should do this now. Absolutely. Um, thinking back, uh, Brian Hay, you may remember, the first time the, uh, the town formally ran the invitational program uh, through the new marathon policy, mm. uh, the town raised approximately 180,000. Right. Here tonight, I want to present Maria to the board as the spark plug behind the spark Yes, the, the, the spark plug behind the heavy lifting that goes on to make the invitational program the success that it has become. Uh, we will learn later that this year that program raised 327,939 and 90 cents. So this is a program, program that has uh, grown substantially, uh, starting off at 180,000. And I really want to thank Maria for doing the heavy lifting. Uh, she does this behind uh, the scenes, uh, doesn't come to the meeting to receive the recognition, and I thought this was the moment to do so. Awesome. So I've only known Maria in a professional capacity three years and one meeting, <laughs> and I will say she is an absolutely an invaluable resource. Uh, any questions I have, I bounce off her. She gets me the answer. If she doesn't have it at the t tip of her tongue, she gets back to me in moments. So, I couldn't do my job as a select person, uh, select board as member, one of the select as one of the member of the select board. Um, <laughs> and I appreciate everything you do. And, and, and thank you, Mr. Kamala, for bringing this to us. It's, this is one of those things that I'm it's so happy to be able to, to uh, talk. And I know how uncomfortable you are, which makes me even happier. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, Marie. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm sure Mr. Hur would like to. Have a comment on that. I think that uh, with respect to the marathon and the numbers and the doling out the numbers and keeping that all, all that organized, uh, you've done a fabulous job. Obviously, the numbers show that. Uh, just look at the you know bar graph, the line graph over the last few years, how the numbers have grown. Uh, grown. Um, but to Brendan's point, Maria does everything in town hall uh, for us, and uh, she's our eyes and ears in many cases, and it really helps an awful lot and makes my job an awful lot easier, and I'm sure it'll make your job easier as you get going, and for others as well. Uh, and we certainly appreciate everything you do, especially the marathon and raising all that money uh, by organizing all that. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Are you? Well, I, I'm, I've been on the marathon committee for 35 years, and I just, I owe you heartfelt thanks for organizing this. And when I look at these runners, and I know how much time and energy it, they have to put into just running this race, and then to raise this kind of money for all of these wonderful, wonderful organizations, I owe you a great deal of thanks, and a thanks to everybody involved. Thank you. Thanks, Maria, oh, for everything. You know, you're, you're always there. Whenever I call Norman Sell and I can't get a hold of him or something, you track <laughs> him down for me, and I appreciate it. And um, you know, and, and you know, this is this is over and above, and this is this is where people don't understand um, how much the the uh, marathon is part of the um, fabric of Hopkinton. You know, it being you know over a hundred years now of, of uh, uh, being part of Hopkinton, and and how much money that that it, it does come into the town for it. It's just, it's just amazing. Here it is, you know, over, over um, $327,000 right here. Not to mention the money they give us to, to, to hold the event and the other money that goes to the schools and all the other events that they, they help us with. And thank you for being a part of it. it it's uh, that town owes you a debt of gratitude. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mr. Nelson. Maria, I think, you know, you're the perfect example of, uh, of what keeps this town running. Um, you know, for us, I get, I get my reports from you, I get uh, the, the notices, and you're the eyes and the ears, you're the, the person that we go to, and um, I think it's wonderful that we get to honor you today Thank and you. Recognize, uh, recognize all the work that you really do. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times it's, it's the people in the background that really make this town work, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, so you all. Much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. <clears throat> Is Ann Martina here? Not yet. No? Okay, we'll hold, we'll hold off on it. Uh, we'll move to the consent agenda. The select Board will consider approving the April 23rd, May 6th, 7th, 15th Board of Selectmen minutes. At the time, it was the Board of Selectmen. At the time, it was the Board of Selectmen. Uh, number two is gifts. The select Board will consider approving the gifts uh, as written. Um, and that's it. Anyone want to carve any of those out? I'll move the consent agenda is written. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Discussion. Hmm? Any discussion? Oh, is there any discussion before we're all in favor or not? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And abstains. Carries. Uh, 705, we seem to be a little ahead of schedule, which hasn't happened for a few years. Um, <laughs> let's see, what do we have? Way too efficient. Is the, let's see, hey, so Mr. Twinney is here. Do, is the, do we need, uh, do we need, can we do the 745 agenda item right now? Yeah, it's it's in a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mr. Twenty, are you ready? Step it up. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so this is a common Victrollers license, Start Line Brewery, 151 R Hayden Row. Uh, the Select Board will consider approving a common Victrollers license for Edward Twenty on behalf of Start Line Brewery. Uh, operations include a small marketplace to sell their own grown produce, snacks, non-alcoholic beverages, and dry goods, local dairy, prepackaged food, mm -hmm. and prepared food to go. Food service with prepared food on site consumption and single serve to go. Mr. Kamalu. Rudy Chair, I believe uh, um, Ted is better placed to introduce the project. This is a project that uh, we have sent to the permitting offices. Uh, we have received positive reviews. I did meet with the inspection team this morning. Uh, they are satisfied with the progress regarding the construction going on. Uh, and um, the recommendation from staff is that uh, this uh, request be approved with any conditions that the board may deem necessary. Okay. Do we have any discussion on the board? This is the kind of package that I like. Tight, neat. <laughs> I have no comments. I'm not sure if Mr. Twenty has. Mr. Anything. Twenty. Well, thanks for the floor. Thanks for everybody. Uh, greetings and welcome to the new select board. Thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, thank you for your time. This is really a, a pretty administrative application. Uh, Waterfresh Farm is no longer uh, Phil Tadaro. The, the Tadaro family, the primary owners of the farm, are now business members of Startline Brewing. So we're simply here today to ask for that same permit, the, the Common Vic, to be uh, updated. And Startline Brewing's name, instead of Water Fresh Farms' name, we still plan to operate as we were operating before in the market and consistent with Startline Brewing's application that was approved about this time last year for our expanded pouring permit. So there's no changes I'm requesting to the alcohol, to the premises, to the operation. The only change that we're, we're asking for consideration today is new ownership and license holder for the common vic associated with the property okay select board members have any comments mr nasrullah um i think this is this is great <laughs> i've enjoyed it um a couple questions are you will alcohol be served in the uh the former water fresh farm area yes so um 
last April uh, with a 5-0 vote from the selectmen just before your arrival on the select board. Um, uh, we came for an amendment to our pouring permit here through the town and have a new premises map that includes basically all of Waterfresh Farms footprint um, from the bathrooms to the cafe to the uh, former tap room that we had indoors as well as a, a new event space in the back of the property and an right. open air patio in the back of that property. So the answer is yes, oh, the, uh, it would just be our beer. We're farmer brewers uh, and our license is different than a traditional section 12 alcohol license. So there'll be no spirits, there'll be no wine. It'll just be the beer we make on property as part of our agricultural products that we're offering. Mm -hmm. And uh, that beer will be available. We do have a privacy wall set up, if you will, for separation of families that desire the distance from the bar uh, based on some feedback we've received over time. and. Um, and so I think we've, we had a well thought out plan that we aren't changing today that had already been approved and, and that is, does include beer being um, consumed throughout the premises. Okay. Yep. Mr. Coutinho. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm, I'm glad that the expansion's finally happening. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, Us too. <laughs> it's been a long year. Yeah. No more setbacks. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for explaining. And we still have a, a couple more weeks of, of hard, heavy lifting to do, but we're painting walls as we speak and getting down to the, the final touches on it. So we're almost there. We will be back, uh, as a side note, in front of you again within a few weeks because our memberships changed in the company. We have another formality to do with the alcohol uh, license, the pouring permit, just update the membership, just like we are with this in effect. So uh, you'll see us again soon, and hopefully we'll see you down at the place as we get open. Perhaps. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Um, I had a chance to take a brief tour one uh, afternoon, evening, I think, probably more evening, um, to check it out. Looks great. I think it's coming along nicely. Um, are you going to still be doing the breakfast sandwiches in the morning? We are not until are. until we hope in the fall to open up Saturdays and Sundays at least. Um, okay. But uh, the nature of the business having, uh, we had to make some choices. So. We will be opening at uh, 11 o'clock midweek. We'll have coffee, um, and uh, we're, we're planning to add breakfast sandwiches and even a brunch into Saturday and Sunday hours as we get uh, our feet underneath us and open the place up, but not at the get-go in June. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mr. Fernier. Oh, I just have one question. Can I get my jug refilled? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I've, I've looked over everything, and I know you, you have um, – your tip certificates and uh, looked at the dimensions and the floor plan and it looks great. Well, thank so you. It's great. Thank you. We're fortunate this town's been so supportive to our business. So, thank you. All right. So I will request a motion. Do we have a motion, Doc, for this one? Here we go. The motion's a bit complicated. Yeah. All right. So. Um, I'd like to make, make a motion to approve a common, common victual license for Statline Blue and Company at 151R Hayden Row. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Or is there further discussion? Yeah, no. we'll just, right. any, anything left on that? All right. This is not a public hearing, right? No, right. no it's not a public yeah, hearing. Yes, so it's just a same discussion. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Okay. Carries. Thank you, Mr. Twenty. Thank Excellent. You. Appreciate it all. Good luck, Ted. See you all soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, move our select board meeting to their patio once they open. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's only if only if okay with H cam. With H cam. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can probably do this Parks and Rec uh, Horribles Parade, a little bit ahead of the agenda. Um, the select board will consider approving a parade permit application from Parks and Rec Representative Dan McIntyre for July 4th Horribles Parade to be held on Monday, July 4, 2019 from 12 to 1. The parade will start and end at the Town Common. Applicant will coordinate traffic patrols and road closures with the police. Uh, expected number of participants is 1 to 100. I know that there will be at least two because Danny and Colleen will definitely both participate. So that's a bit misleading. Um, so this is a parade that's gone on for years and years and years. So um, and we've been 
lucky that uh, Mr. McIntyre has um, offered to take it over. So do we have any discussion on the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hur. The uh, public safety folks are here with us this evening. I assume they are good to go with this uh, as have they have been in years past. Yep, we'll do a typical review like a month before. Okay. All set, thank you. All right. Anyone else? In, in uh, respect of a former member, it's <laughs> yes. going to be litter control. Yes, there will definitely be trash Excellent. control. I will Excellent. go on record to say that sure. Dan McIntyre will pick up any trash if we need be. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Good point. All right. Hearing nothing else, I think we're ready for a motion. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the parade permit for the Parks and Recreation July 4th Horribles Parade. Second. Okay. No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Carries. Mr. Chair, I would suggest that somebody reach out to Mr. McIntyre and make sure he doesn't come over here at 720 since we're. I can do that done. right here. Or Maria's off to do it. Oh, there. right, Maria. Right. Look at Maria's yeah. on. <laughs> she just makes this work. <laughs> that little spark plug, she just took off to go do it. So. Yeah. Excellent. Let's see, so we are about 10 minutes away from the West Nurseries, and I don't see Mr. Mezzet here, so we're going to hold off on that. And Matina has arrived. Oh, and Matina has arrived. The star of the evening is here. All right, so we will jump back to our volunteer recognition, and the select board will recognize the contributions and volunteer services of Ann Matina. Mr. Kamalu. Yes, through the chair, um, Jane Bechman, member of the Volunteer Recognition Advisory Team, is here to make the presentation. Okay. Hello. Hello, Jane. How are you? How are you? Uh, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. I am here on behalf of the Volunteer Recognition Committee, is that what we're called? Group. Group. Um, to recognize Ann Matina, and I'm going to read you the nomination form because she's been involved in far too many things for me to remember off the top of my head. Uh, and plus, yeah, so, okay. Um, Ann has a long history of volunteer service to the town. She's an active supporter of many local charities, including Live for Evan, the Timlin Race, the Respite Center, Brown Dog, and many more. In addition, Ann has taken an active role in many town boards and committees, including MLK Day, serving as chair of the 300th anniversary celebration for the town for several years and accomplishing critical early stage planning and co-chairing the historical home and garden tour. She's a regular and thoughtful contributor at town meeting and arrives informed on the issues and ready to contribute to the discussion. Anne is currently the president of the Hopkinton Historical Society and is tireless in her efforts to provide engaging programming, carefully manage the preservation of the building and, and its treasures, and create a sustainable budget and program for the future. Most recently, Anne spearheaded a new initiative desi designed to benefit all Hopkinton charitable organizations through her Hopkinton Gives Giving Tuesday program. Anne created a website and a logo for all local charities to you to use to allow them to solicit needed funds for their own organization, but also to serve as a vehicle for them to support each other in the process, thereby expanding their exposure and membership base. Anne is an, an active and engaged citizen. She provides thoughtful leadership across multiple organizations with the purpose of preserving town history and promoting town unity. She works tirelessly in each of her many roles and is a true inspiration to those who work with her. Anne represents the very best of community engagement and support and is amply deserving of recognition for all that she has done for the town. So I hope you will join me in saying thank you to Anne. Thank you very much. Uh, Anne, a couple of things you'd like to say to us? Or? Um, <laughs> I didn't prepare a speech. I, I just want to thank Jean for nominating me and you all for supporting that nomination. I'm really honored to be uh, here tonight. Um, uh, Jean knows this, but I, I just came off of nine days of jury duty, so I'm uh, a little tired of officialdom, I have to say, sitting, <laughs> sitting in a chair, <laughs> listening for hours on end, but uh, was grateful. The judge at the end of it came and thanked us all, and he said, I just want you to know that this is uh, the highest civic duty in addition to voting you can participate in and you know all these years I've been trying to avoid actually serving on a jury but I I concurred with him um, I, I feel like everyone has um, a responsibility to their community both uh, their small community their home as well as the larger community.
community, and, and um, I'm grateful for all the opportunities I've had to do so here in Hopkinton. Well, thank you very much, Ann. Uh, it's great to have someone like you in front of us. This is the real easy part of our job, is to recognize people that do great things for the town. So I will start by saying thank you very much, and uh, your hard work and, and countless hours that you give to the town is, does not go unnoticed. So thank you very much. Uh, so I will open it up to the board. Start with Mary Jo. Well, I, I just want to say thank you very much for your service to the town. Okay, Mr. Hurt. And thank you for your service to the town. Uh, I've been doing it a bunch of years, and I go to lots of different things. I've done gone to lots of different things over the years, and you're always sort of popping up, right. sort of in the background <laughs> a little bit, not out front, not giving the speech, but you're always there, and I'm always looking and saying, there she is again. So it's kind of like certain people, you know, you just see out and about, yeah. and I do see you out and about at a lot of the civic engagement activities, and really appreciate everything you do, and I know Hopkinton does too, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah, I, again, I, I uh, reiterate uh, our, the appreciation for, from us as, uh, on the board and, and the town. Yeah, I, I, I go to a lot of stuff, and it's just like Brian says. You are in the background <laughs> doing something, helping out somewhere. And, and that's just, it's just great because, you know, a, 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 a town has, you know, the town of paid um, professionals, but a town can't work without, without the volunteers and, and people like you that make it work. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's well deserved. Thanks. Mr. Nasrullah. I just want to say thank you um, for all the work you do. You know, when we moved back into Hopkinton, we saw all these activities going on, and um, it, it took a while for me to really get my head around that people are volunteering to get this stuff done. Yes. And, and you're right. You see, when you say that it brings a community together, it's, um, it's like family. You know, when, when you have someone who kind of drives that, that family, it kind of keeps everyone together. And uh, really appreciate your keeping the family of Hopkinton together. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right, Mr. Smiler, do we have any? I have a. Uh, so in front of me, I have a certificate of appreciation from the town of Hopkinton that certifies that Ann Matina has contributed significantly to Hopkinton's quality of life through her volunteer efforts. As, a rec as recognized by the select board and is therefore awarded the certificate of appreciation given on this 28th day of May 2019 signed Brendan Tedstone chair Norman Kamalu town manager so thank you so much thank you Ann <laughs> Thank you, Jean, for you. doing the legwork there. All uh, right, so. Mr. Chair, as your self-appointed parliamentarian, I want to comment on the swift manner in which we are working through the agenda and congratulate you <laughs> on your great. efforts. Thank you, sir. I hope it continues And I'm for keeping the next you in order whether you like it or not. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a public hearing at 7.30, so we have plenty of time for that. That's true. Uh, Mr. Mezit's thing is not a public hearing, but yeah. I know he wouldn't be here. I think he is. He is here. Yeah, he's here. Uh, so you're doing a fabulous job, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. And as your self-appointed parliamentarian, I will let you know when you're not doing a fabulous job. <laughs> I appreciate job. that. Have uh, I said I'm a parliamentarian yet? That's good. Enough? That's good. Uh, all right. So if Mr. Mezit's all set, we don't. Uh, we can go five minutes early, right? Yes, please. Yeah, get used to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Mezzik, come on up. So, Weston Nurseries Wholesale, signs within the public right away. The select board will consider approving three signs for Weston Nurseries requested by Peter Mezzik on behalf of Weston Nurseries, Inc. The signs would be located on town-owned property, the right-of-way off Franklin Road. The signs will mark the entrance to a new wholesale building. The request is for one sign at the intersection of Legacy Farms North and Franklin Road. Um, the area would be maintained and would include plantings uh, and lawn area. Uh, one sign that says Weston Nursery's entrance, approximately three foot by four foot, located at the driveway entrance to the building. And one sign at the original entrance to the wholesale yard saying deliveries only, main entrance ahead. This would be similar to the three foot by four foot size sign at the entrance road. Uh, Mr. Kamala. Yes. Um, wait, no, Mr. Mezzet. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Do you want me to explain it in more detail? Sure. All right. Did this make it around? Yes. 
Okay. Yep. And I brought pictures too. I don't know if you guys saw these. Yeah. Oh, you got the pretty ones. So pretty. They, they just gave us the cheap Oh, you want the, you want no, the no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, so basically what we're trying to do is this is a um, town-owned property right here where Legacy North curves up the hill and Franklin Road cuts off and our entrance is about 125 feet up here on the right. So we were interested in putting a sign right here that would not block views from any direction and unlike how it is depicted here, it wouldn't say entrance there, it would say that on the other side. It would just have an arrow on the other side. Basically saying take a left, take a right. And then the entrance sign would be slightly smaller. Same look right at the entrance way. It's good. And we have just constructed, moved in last September, a new wholesale building that's right here. And I sent pictures of the entrance. Yep, we got a road as it exists today. So you can kind of see there's no sign there, and it needs to be signed and yep. needs to direct our customers. Excellent. Mr. Kamalo. Yeah, through the chair. Um, we have reviewed this request extensively and had some discussions with Mr. Mezzet. Um, our suggestions to the board are as follows. Uh, namely, that your review uh, and interest focus on location, public safety, and <coughs> common good benefits. In addition, that the design review board uh, should review the design aspects of the application. I've also discussed that should the board be inclined to allow this request to move forward, that the board considers uh, granting the town manager the authority to negotiate and execute a license agreement. License agreement allows the sign to be on public property. The license agreement can address the use of town property, required insurance, indemnification, utilities if there are any, and how that agreement can be terminated. Um, it also uh, allows this process to move forward expeditiously. Unlike a lease, a lease may require town meeting approval. A license, as we have had before, can be executed by the Board of Selectmen. Good. All right, do we have any comments from the Board? Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. Yes, um, don't we have a bylaw on uh, off-site signage? My, my understanding is yes, there is a bylaw. However, in this case, the location is on public land, and that's why this issue is before the selectmen. Okay. Mr. Katino? No, I'm, I'm good with this. I, it, you know, it's, it's improving. That uh, that little spot of land, just uh, you know, just like the, uh, the the greenery on the way coming into town, a um, some people were visiting us for uh, Memorial Day, and they they pulled off the highway and they said, "Awesome! You know, why don't more towns do what you guys did by you know decorate the center center uh, of the between the two roads?" Did you tell them they don't have a Western Nurseries? No, actually, I just it was a lot of organization. Um, but uh, you know, so thank you. So I know that that this area will look even better with that with that sign there, Mr. Herb. So Mr. Kamalo addressed my questions that I jotted here about insurance liability on the sign bylaw. He just answered a second ago with Mr. Nasrula raised. Um, Peter, are you okay with this license agreement or the concept of a license agreement? I don't know what it is really. No, Have you heard that before tonight? No. Well, okay. this afternoon I heard it. So it's a doc. It's not a lease, but it's like a lease. It's just called a license. And it says we're going to license the land, the use of the land to you and your organization, and all these things have to be covered and carried out. It's so it's very similar to a lease agreement that you would do in a business transaction. Is there a term um, to it? There would be terms to it, I would think. No, no, I mean a length of term. No, um, in fact, with the license agreement, the the, the term simply is um, that the town can terminate the agreement with notice. Okay. Um, we don't have to specify a term. Okay. It, it it's a good tool for us if we want to support this to say go ahead let's figure it out but just us saying we go ahead go ahead and support this there still has to be a tool in place there's got to be some mechanism to it's manage it and, and control it because it's yeah. town land right yeah. taxpayers land yeah. 
So I think it's a good approach, but I'm not surprised that you haven't heard of it yet. Um, but I do think it's something like that needs to get sorted through. So uh, that was my only other question. I think it's a great idea, and I'd love to see it get done. You guys are a great, uh, you know, part of the community. And uh, you've got some nice things that have gone on in the back there now. Let's point them out to people. So it's good. Mary Jo? I, I have read this over today at home, and I'm looking at the pictures, and I really think that it's, it's a fine idea uh, to allow the signs. But I do think we need an agreement, okay. a licensing agreement. It's a town. It is town property. Right. right. Okay. So if I hear no more uh, conversation on this, I'll be ready for a motion. Okay, I'd like to make oh, a book. Just a moment. Okay, sorry. He, 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 through the chair, um, anticipating uh, Mr. Nasrallah that you may have been wondering uh, whether this requires ZBA special permit mm -hmm. because it's off-site. Um, it does not uh, because the use consent falls under Chapter 40, Section 3. Falls under? 48. I'm sorry. Yeah. For, yeah. Chapter 40A, Section 3. Okay. Yeah. All right. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to allow the signs of Western Nurseries within the public right-of-way as proposed, subject to the executions of a license with the town relative to the sign location and provided that all other necessary licensing and permits are obtained. Second. Okay. So I have a second. Okay, second. Okay. Um, I would never speak without your approval. Just want you to know that. <laughs> um, so Mr. Kamal, we want to do this. I think you're gonna, you can feel it. We haven't voted yet, but I yep. think you can feel it. Um, and we want to get a license in place. I mean, if you think about the business they're in, it's in the landscaping and hardscaping business to some extent and making it look really great. So they're not gonna have some junk out there making his business entryway look really bad. So we wanna approach this, and I know you would, with the idea of getting it done and not making it onerous so that we can't get it done. You know what I'm saying? I would not say that would be you, but perhaps some lawyer somewhere would like wanna get involved and make it difficult. We don't want it to be difficult. I can assure the board that we have already contacted town council and uh, it's clear uh, the terms will cover the topics that, that, that I raised, i.e. the use of the land, the insurance, indemnification clause, termination, and utilities if they are at play. Which that, it's a simple one page. That doesn't process. seem like a very onerous process for me to, yeah. to do it all. Okay. Yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion sure. and seconded. Yes, sir. I'd like to add a friendly amendment just um, from the discussion I heard. I think we left out in the motion that we would give the town manager authority to negotiate the, the terms of the, of the license uh, indemnification utilities. Good with that, Mr. Kamala? Yes. Okay, with that in your motion? I'm good. good with it. All right, any more discussion? All right, ready for a vote. All in favor? For the motion with the friendly amendment as read, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we're all set. Thank you, Mr. Meza. Thank you, Brian. Have a great right, day. Peter. Thank you. So the 7.30, we're not ready for. The 8 o'clock, we're not ready for. It looks like we're ready for the town manager report. Chair, I'm going to step off for item one of the town manager's report. Okay. Appreciate that. Mr. Kamalo. I, I threw the chair. I wanted to bring to this board's attention a request that has come to my office through uh, the school business office. Namely, that uh, Select has been discussing with the school department installation of a solar system at the Hopkinton Marathon School. Um, this discussion has focused on one confirming that the project was properly procured uh, through a consortium that was put in place. Uh, I think back in 2016 to do these kinds of negotiations uh, on behalf of solar uh, companies. 
Uh, two, we also uh, wanted to confirm um, the discussions between the school, com the school uh, district staff uh, as well as select relative to the terms uh, that could be included in a PPA agreement, power purchase agreement. Uh, thirdly, we also wanted to confirm uh, the credits that may um, uh, accrue to either select or the town uh, through this process. Uh, we had a meeting last week that involved the chief procurement officer, the school district staff, uh, as well as the uh, town council's office. Uh, we believe uh, that this is an agreement or a proposal that eventually could be beneficial to the community. Um, and therefore, tonight I'm asking the board to authorize the town manager's office to negotiate uh, an agreement that will allow this to move forward, uh, certainly with input from town council as well as the school district. Uh, as part of our discussions, there was also mention of uh, a possible pilot. Uh, we did clarify that a pilot uh, to be in place would require town meeting approval, as well as support from the Board of Assessors. Uh, in addition, we wanted a confirmation that Select had received the authorization from uh, Eversource to do the interconnection. Yes, that has been secured. Uh, and thus, the need for this project to move forward expeditiously. Again, specifically, what I'm asking for the board is authorization <coughs> to move forward and negotiate some terms that I can bring back to the board for your review relative to allowing this project to move forward. You may be wondering, why is this project before the selectmen when, in fact, it's on a school roof? The project is before the selectmen because the selectmen are the only board in town authorized to sign leases. Okay, so I know that <clears throat> um, Select had been involved in the Marathon School as I was sitting a uh, sitting member on that board and they offered to donate an entire solar array um, on the school to begin with. So I've known Ken Driscoll for a long time. He and his company are, are very, they're very much an outstanding company. Uh, and I know that, that uh, Ken's motives are pure. So um, I speak wholeheartedly in favor of select Ken Driscoll and his employees. Um, <clears throat> that said, I will open it up to the board. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. Um, good. All set. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I just, uh, I love when local companies come up to uh, you know, again, it, it, it's, we were just talking about volunteerism, and here it is, here's another, here's, you know, companies, uh, you know, coming in to uh, make uh, our town and our schools better. I think it's, uh, I think it's a great idea, Mr. Kamal. Thank you for uh, negotiating on that. Where'd you go? I'm not clear as to exactly what we're doing, <laughs> which is uh, being new here. <clears throat> we're authorizing the town manager mm -hmm. to negotiate with Select. Select. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Fine with it. Okay. So, Mr. Kamala, what does he need from us? Do you need a motion? Do you need us just to say go ahead? What do you need from us? I think a motion will be helpful, authorizing okay. the town manager to negotiate a power purchase agreement with Solet, with the input from town council as well as the school district office. So moved. Second. 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 Oh. So moved and seconded. All right. Yeah. Any further discussion? So moved. Okay. Uh, all right. So I think we're ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And one abstention, Mr. Herr, who has stepped out of the room, which has closed doors. So he's not hearing this. He is not near us. He's, there's nothing to do with this. I was so. giving you the high sign to do the second, Mary Jo. <laughs> I was giving you the high, right. I was giving you high sign for your first <laughs> second. So it carries. Um, should we grab Mr. Herr? For this, he's good. Yeah. All right. Mm, let's see. So the Main Street Corridor project, Mr. Kamala. Yes. Um, as the board may recall, um, early March, I think mid March, 
the town submitted the 75% design to mm -hmm. Mass DOT. Yep. Uh, that design incorporated feedback and comments that we had received through the public process in town. In addition, we also had had meetings with utility companies with regard to what they would require of the project. Consequently, also with the passage of time, the cost of the project has gone up. Yeah, imagine that. Yes. Um, up until last week, our assumption was that since this project is already on the tip and the items that are contributing to the increase in cost are considered participatory items, Therefore, our anticipation was that Mass DOT and the MPO and the state would fund the increase in costs. Um, we learned towards the end of last week that, yes, that's the case. However, the town has to advocate for that. To that end, we sent a letter to the MPO uh, and I've also sent letters to uh, Senator Spilka, Representative Dykma, alerting them of the need. And again, to be specific, the increase in cost is estimated to be around $1 million. Uh, and again, it's due to the changes in the design, the increase in costs of the items that are included in the project, uh, the requests from utility companies and these items are considered participatory. In other words, they are funded by the state and the grant. So I wanted to let the board know that uh, on May 30th, uh, we will be heading to Boston to advocate for the additional $1 million. And I've asked both Senator Speaker and Representative Dagmar's office to be present for that presentation. Well, that was my question of what the increase was. So it's a, it's a million dollars. Mr. Hur? So this million dollars, which is to cover additional stuff, and being in the construction business, I understand it happens. But if we were to somewhat limit the scope of the project a little bit more and maybe shorten some of the exterior sort of far-reaching uh, ends of this thing, would that help in this with this challenge or no? It, it, it would. In fact, part of the reasons Part of the reasons why the cost is going up is because Mass DOT expanded the scope of the project uh, over the last months. Uh, for example, uh, when we submitted the 25% design, the project right at, ended right at the border of, I think, to uh, Wood Street. Uh, however, during the 75% discussions, Mass DOT uh, requested that the project extend uh, further down on Wood Street. So we're going back to Mass and asking them to reconsider. Yeah, if we proposal. could pull back on Wood Street, yeah. uh, if that could lower our cost situation and improve you know, other aspects of the project, I'm all for it. I agree with you 100% on that. All right, Joe, anything? I have lots of questions, but <laughs> they're for a later date. Okay. okay. Mr. Catino? Okay. Mr. Nasrullah? Just for the clarification on this million dollars, uh, this is being going to, we're going to be requesting that the million be uh, given from the state. Correct? Am I understanding that right? That is correct. We have already submitted a letter. So this will not, there will be no impact to the town paying for it, correct? We don't want that to happen. Okay. Go forward and conquer. <laughs> Do you, need a, do you need muscle? We can always send the chair. Yeah, should somebody go with you guys? If, if somebody's available, that'll be fine. Um, okay. In the past, I did rely on um, uh, participation by members of the planning board. Uh, Ken Wiseman was always well available. Okay. I'm sure I, someone on the board will be welcome to join you. Just give us. I can make myself available if you can just give me a, a, a give me a due notice thereof. Okay. okay. You don't need anything from us. You need a motion on this, right? That's just an update. Yeah, it's just an update. Okay. 
If we were to vote to shorten the project a little bit, would that help you or no at this point? At this point, um, let's hold off on that decision. We want to hear from us, DOT, whether they'll, they'll accept the recommendation. We haven't deliberated my suggestion that we yeah. do this, but just reading the tea leaves, my sense is that we could shorten it a little bit and no one would care. But yep. Again, we're not voting it tonight, but I just think that that could solve a lot of exactly. challenges. Yep. yep. I tend to agree with you. Very good. All right. Tell me to review. Yeah, I, I really wanted to take this opportunity to thank the town boards, committees, and commissions uh, for a very productive annual town meeting. Um, because without saying that the success of the meeting would not have been possible without the, the hard work of the town's volunteer teams. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the uh, town staff, including department heads, uh, who worked tirelessly to make sure that the information required for town meeting uh, to be conducted uh, successfully was available. Um, we clearly still have some uh, room for improvement. Uh, as I've said in past years, I really would like to have the town meeting documents, all town meeting related documents to, oh, Connor is still here, you have to be available at least 10 days before town meeting. Um, we, we are inching towards that goal, but uh, I, I'm hoping we can be more successful in meeting that target. I also want to thank the the volunteer teams that worked during town meeting, uh, including the town moderator, uh, as well as the counters, whenever we needed votes to be counted, they were ready. Uh, last but not least, town meeting went for three days, and the turnout on all the three days was very strong. Uh, it may have been strongest on the third day. Usually you, ex you, you, you expect the turnout to go down, but that was not the case here. And, and it goes to show why I think Hopkinton is a great community. I feel honored to serve here. Townspeople care, they are committed, they are engaged, and they are knowledgeable. I will tell you, watching that planning board, that discussion of, I think, the planning board articles regarding Osmod, was fabulous for any student of local government, for anybody who, loved, who loves democracy, that's a video to watch. The way how town meeting went through the questions and eventually came to a solution was fantastic. Uh, again, want to thank the townspeople for making the town meeting very successful. Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Cowley. So moving on to liaison reports. We can start it. I know we have a uh, public hearing at 7.30, but we can start this. Um, Mr. Kamala, have you got anything? Should we? Is in the ports? No. Okay, this is where we kind of start breaking it down and trading our baseball cards here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So. PDFD. F. Okay, I'll take P. Okay. So, we are going to now... Um, and to break down our liaison list for fiscal year uh, 19 with the sitting board. Um, so how do you want to do this? You want to go through this one at a time? You want to go through who owns what? Just go top uh, to bottom. Top to bottom. Got it. Okay. We'll pick it up. And we have to so we will go top to bottom and we will exclude the column on the f columns on the far right, Norman and Elaine, because I don't imagine those are going to change, correct? So the first one would be the Appropriations Committee. Nope, that's normal. Board of Assessors. That's Brian. You good with that? Um, I think maybe, If there's uh, anything you want, you got to jump in, because I'm just going to say yeah, because we've done it. No, I, I, I would really like to be the liaison to the Board of Assessors. Okay. She may have it, Mr. Chair, if it's okay with the rest that's of the board. That's all my expectations. That is more than okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> that was one. an obvious one, right? So Mary Jo is the Board of Assessors. Okay. Okay. All right. So next, you guys are jotting this down, right? I don't have to. Uh, the next is the Town Manager's Budget Advisory Team, which was uh, Brian and Claire. I imagine that this is something that the chair needs to jump on, or can it still be um, Brian? It can't be Claire. Brian, I know it can't be Claire. Yeah. 
I think the chair should be involved. Okay. Good with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll do that. That I'll goes in line with the school committee liaison general. Yep. So, yeah, okay. yeah, that works out too. Good. Uh, the Capital Improvement Committee, Irfan, you good with that? I'll stick with it. All right. Mary Jo, if there's any any of these other ones that you want, you got to jump right in. I hear you. All right. <laughs> You're going to get plenty, don't worry. I've known you for a long time. I've never known you to be shy. He knows me. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Thanks. Fire Department, I am going to take that one over. Oh. Lucky you, I'll Chief. Take, I'll take police. All right. I liked it. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Board of Appeals, that's John. You all right with that? Yeah. Okay. Concom is me. Uh, I am going to have a uh, kind of an exaggerated load this year, so I would be willing to give up Concom if there's someone that wants it. I'll take it. Okay. Who's that, Mr. Mr. Nasrullah? Mr. Nasrullah. That Nasrullah. Makes sense. That's it. Okay. Uh, planning board, Mr. Nasrullah, you are a standing member there. Are you good with that? I'll stick with it. Sure. I like I like you being on that since you were a member of the, actually I think everyone except me. <laughs> was a member of the board. Isn't that a stepping stone for us? So. <laughs> it used to be. Uh, <laughs> board of Health, John. Yeah, I'm good with that one. Too. Good. Permanent Building Committee, our friend. Sure. Okay. School Committee. That is going to have to be me and uh, Mr. Her. Yep. Good with that. Yep. Okay. Uh, Keefe Tech School Committee, that was me. I will stay on that, if that's all right. Uh, Cemetery Commission was Claire. I'll do it. <laughs> Mary Jo now. It's a dead end. Uh, <laughs> yeah. let's Moving see. right along. <laughs> oh, nice, John. You <laughs> just stick to sitting there looking beautiful. I'll do the comedy. Uh, the Council on Aging was Brian. Yep. You going to stick on that? Yep. Okay. Next we go to the... ADA Oversight Committee, her friend? Sure. Okay. Uh, Veteran Celebration Committee, you are not getting that away from me. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I will fight over that one. Uh, tax Relief Committee. I've, I've been on it for a number of years. And Sold. I was a founding member, so Sold. I there you go. Seconded. Sold. So moved. Uh, cultural, Hopkins and Cultural Liaison, her friend? Sure. Okay. Marathon Committee, Brian? Sure. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> well, you're I'd like it. to do that because I've been on it for 35 years. So you're going to step off that committee now, right? I'm off it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with that. She takes it. Okay. That's Mary Jo. You guys all set over there keeping up? All right, good. Uh, let's see. Where were we at? Marathon. The Marathon Fund Committee is John. Yeah, that's me. That's you. That, I've been on it for 100 years, so what the heck. Another one I've been on. We keep for that kind of separated. Yeah, separated. Some money involved there. Uh, the public library. That was me. Uh, I'll take that. Okay, Brian. That's you. Uh, Parks and Rec I'll with John. With I'll stick with that one. Youth Commission Irfan. You can stick with it. And the CPC was Claire. What are we doing on your? I'll, where, where I'll do the CPC. If you want. All right, I'm just going to stop right there. Yeah. Okay. So Mary Jo will take CPC. Yeah, I'm familiar with it from assessors. So. All right. So I see by the we're going to have to take a break from this. I see by the clock it's 7:30. Next on the agenda on the next item on the agenda is a public hearing for uh, posted public hearing petition for joint pole location Cedar Street Verizon New England Inc. and NSTAR Electric. Uh, request for permission to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way. Cedar Street, uh, as written to us. Mr. So, Chair, I move the Board of Selectmen open to public hearing. Second. Okay. You need a vote on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries? All right. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Sherry Story. I'm here on behalf of Verizon. Um, it, we, it's in support of a um, joint petition between Eversource and Verizon to place a pole on the westerly side of Cedar Street, and that's approximately 1,200 feet from the northerly center line of C Street. <coughs> the abutters uh, have been notified. Um, I don't know if you have any questions that you'd like to ask. <coughs> Um, Mr. Chair, if I could go. Sure, go ahead, Mr. So this is to 
once again, I'm sorry, to move a pole or but to... It's a, a new pole placement. New pole placement. That's correct. What's the reason for the new pole placement? Um, the reason is um, Eversource has asked that we um, make, place a new pole. Um, if you see, this is last October. I yeah. have copies. This pole is basically leaning. Got it. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of heavy equipment on it, um, and they're um, proposing to place a pole directly across from it. Um, as sort of an anchor, so to speak. I think they also are in, um, intending to replace that pole in place. So it will be a new pole. Um, and then to anchor that, there'll be a, a pole directly across the street. Because okay. there, there is a lot of, a lot of equipment um, on, on that pole. Yeah, okay. So as somebody, I don't know, is this part I would talk about? Sure. Okay. As somebody who has, <laughs> uh, who has driven on that road for years, I will agree with you that that pole is leaning. I will also tell you that that pole is probably no more ang leaning at any more of an angle than any of the other ones are. Yeah. And our, our concern has been for a long time that if one goes, they're all going to go. Mm. And, um, you know, we... The recommendation was made to us from Eversource. It is a, a Verizon pole set area. Um, we, Verizon owns those poles. So um, it's really not, we're not really able to, they, they're asking us to fix, it, to, to make this correction. And, and it could be that, you know, they may ask to, uh, you know, have others corrected in the future. Mm -hmm. At this point, this is, seem, seems to be, it looks pretty bad to me. Um, yeah, they're all pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a concern that I would have is, first of all, you're not going to leave us with a double pole, correct? You're going to. That's you're, correct. It, it's replacing <laughs> the pole, and is, yes. will, will it be replacing it at that date? Yes. So the day you put that, the other one will, will go away. That's right. So we won't have a double pole. That's right. Um, concern that I have is knowing that that land is wet, 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 wet. Mm -hmm. When you put another pole in there with the same equipment on it, mm -hmm. chances are it's going to go the same way, and what it's going to do is probably pull the pole across the street with it. I, I think that's, I mean, I, I think that's the purpose of both replacing the pole and placing one across the street to anchor it. Um, you know, short of, of a really lengthy, I mean, it's a, it's a very lengthy street, short of them asking us to replace, you know, numerous poles at this point, I, they're just asking us to make this one correction. So, you know, again, it could happen in the future. I, okay. I can't say for sure, I'm not, I don't have that information, but right now it, it's this one pole that they're looking to correct. It's, it's an older pole, most likely, I, I, I'm, I'm imagining, because it is, it's leaning quite a bit. Um, and I think replacing it with a newer pole and um, placing, you know, putting a pole across the street as it's a stub pole as an anchor, I think that that would be a, a reasonable solution um, for this particular issue. And that, that pole across the street, that wire will not have any impact, no possible impact on traffic going no. by for height and things like that? No, not at all, no. So Mr. Kamala? Through the chair, question on that aspect. So, we're now going to have wires across the street. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're trying to move away from having wires across the street. Here on Main Street, we're trying to bury the wires. Yes. This well, it, I mean, I'm not sure if there are any, any, if it is crossing the street anywhere. I can't, in this particular shot, I don't see that it is. Um, it is a reasonable um, correction to make in this kind of situation. Um, you know, obviously they would be sure that there's clearance and there would be no issue um, with clearance at all. And through the... Um, and there really, there really aren't, it wouldn't be impacting, you know, any, any residential properties. There really aren't any residential properties that directly abut this location. Um, it's vacant land owned by the town where the pole would be placed. Through the chair, what other engineering alternatives were considered? Before making this um, right now, this is the the best solution that that's been offered. Um, I don't know what other. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I'm I'm a right of way specialist. I deal with um, kind of the go between between property and the engineering. So I'm not 
um, by the time it gets to me, the decision has already been made what they want to do. Um, if it's not acceptable, then, then you know, I would go back and, and, and discuss with engineering and see what other options they would have. Um, personally, I, I don't, you know, it, it's happened some, occasionally when you have an abutter that, that may not want an additional pole, you know, blocking their property. I, I don't really see that that's an, that's an issue in this case. Um, I think it's a it's a good solution to correcting a pull that's in desperate need of, of you know of support um, and pulling it back with with a, 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 a guy or a pole brace on the same side of the road. I think it's it's just gonna it's gonna go the same way. It needs to be supported across the street. I don't know if, if anyone would like to have a copy of these. I think we have those in our package. No, yeah. Okay, I, I took this myself this morning. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, okay. those are different ones. Oh. Yeah. Do you guys have this one? Yeah. Uh, that shows where it was staked, I believe, um, in the packet that came. Was they showed where it was staked? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, at the pole, which is which is across the street from here, mm -hmm. and it's leaning some, but it's not leaning half as much as the pole to the north or south of it, yeah. and and that's that is a real problem. So, okay, yep. So if, it, you know, you, you, you live in this, in this community, obviously, and you're familiar, if there are other polls, then I think, you know, we, can, we should definitely address it. Yeah. And, and correct I, I it while, while, you know, it's in season. This is the construction time yep. of year, and if it needs to be done, then we should, you know, do it. This was the poll that was brought to our attention by Eversource. Okay. Mr. Hur? So um, I appreciate you coming this evening and, and presenting this to us. Uh, the challenge has been that there have been many predecessors of yours uh, over the last several years coming to us about other issues mm -hmm. in town with polls and things like that. And it's always turned into a bit of a, a, a tense discussion only because the town is very frustrated with the poll situation in general. Mm -hmm. And here we are basically saying we're going to take one poll that's bent and we're gonna, we are going to straighten that as part of this process, mm -hmm. right? right yeah. But then we're going to add another pole across the street and put a high tension guide wire across to hold this one in place. And right. I can see why we'd want to do that. Right. But what that does is we're just adding another pole to uh, a, an infrastructure that the town is already struggling with in general. And that's my frustration with this. I don't know if there's an answer other than voicing my frustration with this. Um, but we have talked about lots of other polls with lots of other representatives, mm -hmm. and I don't think they've all been addressed. In fact, I know they haven't all been addressed. So um, I think we're probably going to have to figure this one out tonight, but if you could just message back to your colleagues, yeah. the town of Hopkinton remains frustrated with the lack of attention to the double polls in town, the leaning polls in town, and adding polls in town. We don't want more polls. We want less polls. Right. Right? I and think that's, that's, you know, in, in some of these you know, lovely communities, I think that's a big frustration, not only for yours, but for a lot of, you know, a, a lot of them in, in these sub suburban areas. You know, it's more poles, you know, we, you see them as ugly, but they are kind of a necessity unless, you know, you want to rip up Route 85 and go all underground, which I don't think... No, we'd like to do option. that, but we'd like you guys to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> because we are, right outside this building, we are undergrounding all these wires. And the yeah. taxpayers are paying, if I remember correctly, $3 million or some number like mm -hmm. that to make this happen outside town hall through our center of town. So we're getting rid of poles here, mm -hmm. and now a half mile down the street, we want to add a pole. So that's the frustration I'm expressing. Right. Um, I mean, it is pretty rural out there. You know, you're, you're not you know, in the center of town where there are businesses. It's, it's very rural out there. I understand. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Catito. Yeah, if I may, get, get, but see, to, to, to Mr. Hur's point, so we've got, we've got a whole row of poles on this side of the street, right. and now we're going to stick another one right on the other side. <coughs> and um, as much as it's rural, people like that rural look. I, I know. You know, and, and, and um, you know, and what if it, you know, what if, you know, what if it start, they both start to do this? But then it's going to really look bad. And then, and then to Mr. Hur's point and to 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 the to the chair's point, you know, um, we haven't had great um, response. So if they both start doing this, and then we and then somebody comes in front of us, we're not going to do anything till 
until the uh, Leaning Towers Towers of Pisa are fixed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so uh, I, I, you know, being an engineer and and, and so Mr. Ted, uh, Mr. Uh, Her is also, you know, we know that that it's necessary. You, you, it's something needs to be done, but um, you know, to have them look and see if there's, you know, if it's possible to throw a guide wire down, you know, you know g coming down to the edge of the road or something to that effect. If there's something else they could do other than putting an, another pole on the opposite side, I really love for them do, to do you know that. what the um what the public right away is on that particular street miss lazarus <laughs> no. yeah. I, i'm i'm just wondering i mean it looks as though the pole might be five feet off of the road um it's a rather wide road you know a guy wire may may go on to private property at that point i mean they can be 12 18 um, feet long. That may be an issue. I, I'm not sure. I mean, it's possible. Mr. Kamala. Um, for the board's consideration, I'm recommending that uh, this matter be referred back to staff. I think we need to have some discussions regarding other engineering solutions. Uh, we also have had a request before Verizon regarding relocating uh, the poles at Hayden Row. And the response has been really, really disappointing. Um, so- I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, so uh, again, I based on the questions, in, yeah, based on the questions raised by the board well, tonight. Make it so. I haven't been involved in, in you know, any <coughs> other projects in this town. Um, so I'm not familiar with any of yeah. the other issues that you may have had. Yeah. That's fair. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Nasrullah. Yes, um, I concur with everything I've heard on this board um, and with Mr. Kamalu's uh, suggestions. Um, I would really be interested in knowing what other engineering um, solutions were even considered um, and what, what else can be done besides adding poles. Um, I agree with you that it, it's, it looks like it's in rough shape. It is leaning. Um, Mr. Catino's comment on having two doing that is, is also something very concerning to me. Um, as far as the rural nature of that road, that is what's beautiful in my mind. And uh, I would love to not see a pole, but we want electricity, so I'm willing to live with it. But can you, can you, right. can you help us out, please? And, <laughs> <laughs> and at least, you know, Did my best. I mean, consider yeah. some other options. Yeah. Um, there's got to be some other options. Okay. All right, so, why don't I, um, you know, I can refer back to engineering and, and you know, if you want to let me, who, who I should pass along to them, we can have some sort of a site meeting possibly with the with an, one of the engineers on the project and, and you know, maybe it would be a lot more productive to, to discuss that type of thing with someone who is knowledgeable in that because that's not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not an engineer, and I, you know. Oh, okay. um, so I'm going to hold off on my comments because they probably wouldn't be kind of productive. Uh, so I will send this out to the public. Is there anyone here from the public that has any conversation or, or uh, comments for the item at hand? Seeing none. Um, so I would I'll make a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Mr. Chair, I would suggest we leave the public okay. hearing open, yeah. okay. but continue it yeah. until such time as staff has had an opportunity to work with the Verizon representatives to explore other engineering options. Mm -hmm. That okay. I don't think requires a motion. Doesn't require a motion. So we're just not going to act. So, so we're just no just no no, no action, right? So we're done. Good idea. Yeah. Thank okay. you. So who should um, I? I had get in touch with this. Yeah, do, do you have a card? I, I send don't, you an email. No, they don't. They don't give those to me. <laughs> okay. They just send me out. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we, can, should, yeah, we should thank them for that. I know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I have no idea what you're getting. We will into. contact the name provided in the application. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be in touch with him tomorrow, and I'll let him know, um, and then we'll um, we'll get an engineer out out with you and Good. try to come up with. Another solution, if it's not acceptable. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So moving back to our liaison reports. Back to that. Oh, I 
believe we left off at CPC. Did we assign someone to CPC? Was that Mary Jo or that was Claire? No, I, I think I said, yeah, community preservation yep. said I'd take it. Okay, so that's Mary Jo. Yeah. Uh, the Woodville Historic District Commission. That was Claire. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, could go back a sec. The CPC, is that a voting position? That the board appoints, or are we just is that a pure liaison position? It doesn't liaison. say liaison. It's a liaison. Sorry? It's a liaison. Just liaison. Okay, thank you. Also, sorry. Woodville Historic District Commission. That was Claire. Mary Jo? Well, uh, I just joined the Historical Society. Well, there you go. So uh, I guess I'll try it. So Thank then, bang, bang, bang. And the next one, too, the Historical Commission. Yeah, fine. There you go. And Historic District. And the Historic Edition, <laughs> uh, Historic District Commission. Excellent. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm into history. I yeah. have to jump on <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a good resource. Um, let's see, BAA liaison, that is John. Oh, I would like that. No you, way. There's no way. <laughs> I've got some experience. I know all these people. Yeah. You know? Fuck that, <laughs> yeah. So what is the what is that title called? Is that the liaison to the BAA? Yeah. yeah why do we have that? It, well, it's we, new. We, what did we decide we needed that? Yeah, we needed it for lots of reasons, specific to contractual obligations and other stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Contracts. But it's a liaison position. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I report back to you guys uh, just about just every other week. Sure. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So it all we'll works out well, Brian. <laughs> jump down to the center school reuse advisory team. Is that? Did we not say that that uh, it's, Cla yeah, Claire it's was going to stay on that? Oh, that's no, gone. The, didn't yeah, the, kind of disbanded. the advisory team was. Uh, all right, it was disbanded. Disbanded. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The board of selectmen liaison. I'm sorry. The select board liaison to Hopkins and Schools Athletic Field Subcommittee. Well, of you, course, you, that's going to be Brian. You're going to do more fields, Brian. I don't know. Hello. I'm not sure if that committee is active at the moment, but I'm happy to stay with it. Of course you are. Uh, 26.2 Foundation, that's me. I'll stick on that. Uh, elementary School Building Committee, that's just about done. We're, we're wrapping that up now. Uh, I'll stay on that. Uh, Upper, Trails, Upper Charles Trail Committee, that's that me. was John. Is it still John? It's still me. Still John. But you guys are going to have to reappoint me uh, at the end, of, the end of the month. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Uh, open Space Preservation Commission, that's me. I like that one a lot. Uh, affordable <laughs> Housing Trust Fund, that's Irfan. I'll stay there. Uh, the MAPC. 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 I, I belong to MAPC when I worked for the state senate, so I can take MAPC if you want. Was that the one that Mrs. Would Mrs. Wright be interested in staying with that? Do we know? Yeah, in fact, it's a town manager appointment. Does not necessarily. Um, yeah, that's right. That was town manager appointment. Yeah, we we will look into that and come back to okay. the board. It's fine. Yeah. Continuity is good there in that yeah. position, and if she's interested, I I would support that. But not no disrespect. Right no, no. Don't. I, I was on it for like four years, way back when. Way back when. <laughs> the Metro West Regional Transit Authority. That's Brian. Stay on that. Yep. The Hopkins in 2030 representative. Mm -hmm. That's me. It's John. You good with that? Yeah. Irvine Tadaro Properties Advisory Group. That's me. And the Pratt Farm Master Plan Team is Brian. Brian. Yep. I think that's all of them, isn't it? Are we doing anything with that? Yep. 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 Are you doing that's anything it. with that, Brian? No. Water. Water. We tried everything else we bought it for, and no one wants to do it. So okay. So that's it. That's all of them, right? Uh, one question. There you go. Um, where was it? Oh, the center school. When it, it says a new position, and it was Claire. Who did we decide was going to be on that? Uh, it's defunct. It's, it's defunct. Yeah. Oh, gone. Okay. Yep. Newly defunct. Newly defunct. Well, that's what I thought it's you not said. Defunct. But it wasn't it's defunct. It's disbanded. Okay. Disbanded. Okay. It's no longer with us. Uh, all right, so that is done. That is done. Any future board agenda items? I have none. No. All right. So that leaves us simply with the boys, boys in blue. The staff appointments. The select board 
will consider promoting Detective Bill Bouchard and Officer Arthur Schofield to the rank of Sergeant, as recommended by Chief Lee. Chief. Good evening. Okay. So we are promoting or well, requesting for, for appointment of two sergeants. Uh, first up, uh, we'll start with the uh, officer Schofield. Step up, sir. First, he's the junior, junior guy. Yes, he is. <laughs> I think you know his uncle. I guess he might have knuckled up a little I don't know what you're talking hockey. about. I'm a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me start by saying that uh, this was a uh, very competitive process uh, with a written test and a pretty extensive uh, oral interview uh, you know, with the help of HR, outside chief from a, a, another community, as uh, well as uh, Deputy Chief uh, Bennett. Um, both Billy and Arthur rose to the top in the process. They've done a, you know, an awesome job in the process, both in the uh, oral and the written. And um, their career, let me just uh, tell a little bit about Arthur. He grew up in Southborough and later attended UMass Lowell where he's obtained a bachelor's degree in liberal arts and sociology and has a master's degree in criminal justice. He joined the police department only back in 2014 and uh, completed his training at the Reading Police Academy. During his time as patrolman at the Hopkinton Police Department, he has held various positions throughout the organization, such as field training officer, crime prevention officer, Knox Box coordinator, commercial vehicle license officer, cross match administrator, and SEPTED officer. Um, I believe you're all familiar with the SEPTED crime prevention through environmental design. That was one of my goals. Arthur was cho chosen to head that up, and he's done an excellent job working with businesses and consulting them on security needs. Um, he is also a, a fire mounts permitting officer, and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce him to you for your consideration. Uh, but before I do say that, that he uh, Arthur is what exemplifies the essence of community police and he's done a great job at that sense but he also has a showing great talent for his ability to lead uh, especially in that FTO role where we have uh, several officers that have done a great job of that and I'm more than confident he can handle uh, being a sergeant and he will be uh, assigned if uh, accepted assigned to the patrol division on the midnight shift. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Arthur. Let's go field. Thank you, Chief. Officer Schofield. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. Long time no see. Yeah, how you been? Good. So, why don't you tell us a little about you? Um, I don't often get a chance to put you guys on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take full advantage of it. I mean, the Chief covered um, a lot of it, just on a local. Um, I didn't go to Algonquin, though, so that's okay um, at the boarding school. but. Um, yeah, from South, I've been here for about five years, and uh, I think I'm a pretty good people person, and um, you know, I try to put myself in other people's shoes, and I think that's a big role, is um, you know, in this community, interact with the community, and uh, you know, I try to tell myself what you know, you can't ask people to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. I think that's a big leadership role. Um, so that's that's just a little bit about me. So I'm going to jump in and go first, if you don't mind. So uh, I've known Mr. Schofield since he got, Officer Schofield since he came on. I've never had uh, an interaction with him that, that was anything other than professional. Unfortunately, I've not had many professional dealings with him. Um, but always professional, always uh, proactive. You know, uh, you know when, he, when he sees my kids at the, at the, well, we won't say the spoon or any place that sells food. But uh, always just, uh, you know, just a, a great guy and, and a great addition to the department. And I think that um, as someone who, uh, who sits on this board, it, it's, uh, you know, the, the two candidates in front of me are, I'm, I'm pretty proud to be able to potentially promote tonight. So uh, I will turn this over to Mary Jo first. Actually, I don't know Officer Schofield. I never met him. <laughs> so I'm meeting him for the first time tonight. I am impressed by the recommendations of the chief and uh, I would welcome you. Thank you. Mr. Herr. 
So there are um, uh, a lot of folks in the Hopkinton Police Department uh, from which the chief uh, can choose for these things and go through the process that uh, others engaged in get involved in. Uh, and to see you two folks come out is great. It's, there's a lot of good people there. So uh, I'm sure it was a very difficult decision uh, and certainly one that uh, is well deserved following a process that I know is pretty rigorous. So congratulations to you and uh, I look forward to you serving as a sergeant here in Hopkinton. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Catino. Yeah, to reiterate, reiterate what uh, Mr. Hur was just saying, I know that it was a, it w was a tough process because we really do have a lot of great people. But it says a lot that you've been here such a short time and really rose through the ranks and did a great job. Um, you know, I've, I've been watching, the, the, I've always been an advocate of the community policing. I've always talked about it, but the great thing about our uh, um, blue department is that uh, everybody rises to the occasion when necessary. And, and, it's, and it's had to happen several times and, and we have a great department. So congratulations and uh, looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Mr. Masur. You know, I love seeing uh, promotions from within. I love seeing that, you know, someone rising through the ranks and uh, competing and, and, and winning, it, winning it out. So I think, um, I think that, you know, you've gone through a rigorous process. I think this is um, a recommendation from Chief Lee. Has, carries a lot of weight with me. And uh, I'm excited to see you stick around. Thank you. Okay. So how do we do this here? Do we... Wait for uh, as the parliamentarian, I would suggest, Mr. Chair, to take them one at a time. Okay, so I will find our motion sheet here. Do we have a motion sheet? Yeah. I don't All right, so I will. Um, okay, then I, I, I'd say. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to. Uh, oh, so just a moment, please. No secrets. Good. <laughs> you didn't bring enough for one. Didn't, don't bring enough for all of us. All right, Mr. Catino. I'll make a motion to um, follow the recommendation by Chief Lee to promote Detective Arthur Sch Schofield to the rank of sergeant. Is he a detective or an officer? Or an officer. Right uh, now. Officer, officer. From officer to sergeant. So officer. just a sergeant. Uh, Bill's the detective. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Point of procedure. I don't know. Is we there a, a uh, is, is there like a pinning procedure? I've been I've been my brother's a law enforcement officer and uh, I know there's a pinning procedure to go along with this so you guys can come up Chuck. come on up family <laughs> and chief to your point uh, the reason this nose is so pretty is because I never did play hockey against his uncle <laughs> excellent thank you very much Good job. Thank you. Good all right Moving forward, Chief. Good Next evening. up is uh, Detective Bill Bashad, who will be the uh, senior sergeant out of the two. Uh, Bill's been on uh, quite some time, um, starting way back in 1995 as a auxiliary police officer. But Bill was born August 30th, 1974. Grew up in the town of Hockerton. He was on the football teams, uh, team, golf team. Uh, for Hopkinton High, as well as playing concert and jazz band. Yes. Really? Well rounded. <laughs> <laughs> fancy yeah, boy. Take a look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> After graduation, he spent a year at Bridgeton Academy, uh, college uh, prep school in Maine, where he played football and was a member of the ski team. Bill has received a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Westfield State College and spent time, uh, nine years in the Army Reserves, rising to the rank of sergeant. So this is his second time around to be promoted, <laughs> if it happens. He was a member of the Hopkinton Auxiliary, 1995-2002, uh, be, before becoming the first person sponsored uh, to the Boylston Police Academy. Upon graduation, he was hired as a full-time patrolman by the town of Hopkinton. 
Activated by the Army Reserves in February 2002, Officer Burchard served in the 10th Mountain Division in Fort Drum, New York, and attended the Air Assault School. He has been part of the Semlex SWAT team, which is our local uh, regional SWAT team that Bill has been uh, a very uh, an important member of that team, has been on many call outs, and I've heard nothing but praise from his uh, regional leaders. Uh, he has also been a field uh, training officer for the department from 2014, 2016, again, showing those leadership qualities that has prepared him to become a sergeant. He currently uh, serves as a detective and he handles the court prosecution for the Hopkins Police Department since 2016, which is a very uh, difficult job handling all the cases, uh, responding to court, uh, getting warrants signed by uh, judges, working with attorneys, and he certainly has handled that responsibility. Uh, and I've, I'm sure you're all aware that I've decided to create that position because of its importance to the rank of sergeant, which he won't be getting. He's going to be nice. <laughs> His personal uh, decorations include receipt, uh, a receipt of the first responder recognition award from the Municipal Training Academy and the Matoria Service Award and the Mother Against Dr Drunk Driving Award. He is uh, with his wife, Margaret, have two boys, Colin and Sean, and he currently lives in Upton. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Detective Rashad for your consideration. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Rashad. Mr. Teston. I'd like to say a few words to us before we make our decision on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, uh, as you well know, I've grown up here, well, I've had grown up here since uh, first grade. I've known you and uh, actually a couple of the selectmen for a very long time. Um, there's only so much you can fit in the bio, obviously. Uh, I was in Boy Scouts, I was in Troop 1, Cub Scouts. Uh, <laughs> no Mrs. Lafreniere for a very long time with that. And um, just it's been my pleasure to, to work here. It was my dream to, to obviously work as a police officer here from the, from the very get-go and then uh, just and working towards uh, rising through the ranks. All right. So I can confidently say that there's not a person in this room that has known you longer than I have. Um, <laughs> and I will touch on a few things. So uh, Bill has always been a leader uh, with, his, uh, with his friends, with his peers. Growing up, he was always level-headed. Uh, I found him to always do the right thing regardless of what the pushback was from those friends um, and uh, Bill never wanted to be a cop in any other town but Hopkinton which I find um, as an outsider probably the hardest thing to do to go out and, and just want to be a cop in your town and do the right thing with your peers I find that to just to, to show how much character Bill does have um, so in the uh, in the tradition, well, I, so uh, I wasn't always as nice to Bill, so I have to kind of be nice <laughs> now. He was friends with my baby brother, um, but I, uh, I, I, uh, with wholeheartedly can't endorse somebody any more than I endorse Bill. I've known him for, you know, most of his life since first grade, probably. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nasrul. Right. I got to mix it up. <laughs> Officer Bouchard, I haven't had much opportunity to meet you, but um, the accolades that I'm hearing from, uh, from our chair and from the chief um, is, is quite encouraging. I think uh, it's, in, it's, it's really neat that uh, you're from the town, um, you left, you served, and uh, came back. Sounds like you're an all-around renaissance man playing <laughs> jazz. And uh, at the same time, busting criminals. <laughs> so, well, yeah. <laughs> He's like Ron Burgundy, but different. <laughs> and uh, I'm a true jazz geek myself, so that carries a lot of weight for me. So, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, sir. Mr. Catino. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just uh, very pleased to see this. You know, to, to, to uh, reiterate both uh, the chair and, and uh, Fon's points. You know, it's um, it's so impo imp uh, important to have homegrown talent. You know, we've got it here on the we've got it here on the board. And you know, to, when Mr. Ted Stone, you know, speaks of you, he's known you your whole life, and that's important to know. And but it's, but the same same thing, you've known the town your whole life. 
and that's important to know and, and it's important for, for other officers that are coming in that you can you can um, uh, train them and and, uh, and lead them to uh, and give them you know good information inside information on what's happening in the town and and shorten stuff um, it's just great to, to have you uh, moving up the ranks and doing exactly what you want to do all your life it's fabulous thank you mr. her uh, I think it's great, Bill, that this is your next role here in Hopkinton. I think it's well-deserved. Your resume speaks for itself. Your service to our country speaks to itself, and thank you for that service, too. Um, you know, it's a great <coughs> opportunity for the town to take somebody from home and bring them right on through. So it's a great opportunity for us as a community, and we speak on behalf of the community, and certainly for you and your family, and I think it's a great fit. With that said, please excuse me for a couple minutes because we need to do a little business here, too. Uh, so don't... I don't want to rain on your parade or anything like that, but I need to ask him a couple of questions about money because that's also part of our job. So tell me about the two sergeant positions now, both budgeted for FY20? No, one was bu budgeted for FY19. We're just filling uh, that, that now okay. because we, 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 uh, when I created that position, it was to add a sergeant to the ranks so we didn't hire uh, an extra person. We also included the two part-time SROs in that. Okay. And this next one is for uh, 2020 uh, for the uh, detective sergeant's position that was passed at uh, this past town. So that's in this budget. So we have a position from last year, Mr. Kamala, that didn't get funded or didn't get filled until this year, but it's funded because it's still part of that budget from last year. And we have a position for this year and it's funded because of the budget for this year. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Bill, thank you for putting up with me, but that's part of the job. Thank you, Chief. All set. No problem. Thank you, sir. Mayor Joe. Oh, I just, uh, <laughs> I wholeheartedly support Mr. Burchard. Um, I have known him since Boy Scouts. <laughs> since he was a Boy Scout and his dad leads and his whole family. And he has always been a people person. He's always acknowledged, even from the time he was little, he was a leader in Boy Scouts and he will, he continues to be a leader. I am extremely impressed with his military background and 10th Mountain Division, quite a group. And uh, I can't say enough about him. He's just a great person, and I'm so glad he's from Hoppington, for Hoppington. Thank you. Thank you. So I will entertain a motion, uh, if someone would like to make a motion on I'd Mr. Like Burchard's I'd behalf. Oh, okay. Oh, Mary Jo. Yeah, cool. I was going to say, I'll make a motion that th through the recommendations <laughs> of Chief Lee, we accept the promotion, or we promote Detective Bill Burchard, to the rank of sergeant. Second. Okay, any more discussion? Hear none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And abstentions, good. So before we do the handshake, I think I kind of dropped the ball on that last one. Why don't we go ahead and have whoever's gonna pin you come up and pin you, and then we'll handshake you. All right? Well, look at this. Why don't you tell us <laughs> who you got here? Oh no. <laughs> 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 Awesome. <laughs> you got your best He's got a vest on. He's got a vest. Yeah. This is Sean? Actually, That's awesome. What do you think, Sean? Pretty cool, huh? Hey, back. I can get him right now for taking away your Xbox or something. <laughs> He's chucking himself on TV. Grab the taser. Awesome. All right, great job. Congratulations. I want to kiss later. Congratulations. Good job. Yes, let's get some photos. Okay. Let's move over. Let's do our usual. So, Chief, I don't know if we can get video rolling, but Mr. Bouchard does a real vanilla ice dance. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we're just done.
can't get everyone in. Uh, 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 do I put, hey, put, put, put some people in chairs? In front, yeah, yeah. Put the, put the two, two officers in chairs. Come on, the two sergeants. There we go. Get the other chair. You that will work. We <laughs> 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 said something. Oh, it shortens us up a little bit. regarding the last matter. Okay. I, I want to take this opportunity also to... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I was going to... Yes. Yeah. Okay. About... No. Okay. I, I want to okay. take this opportunity to commend Chief Lee for the two appointments, mm -hmm. noting that the appointments are actually occurring under the new contract. Oh, There's very no nice. provision for the promotion process, and I also want to thank the union for collaborating with the... Awesome. punishment on this issue. Thank so you. Noted. Thank you very much, Chief. Okay, great. Thanks, Chief. Chief. Have a good night. So one of the things I meant to do before we started the, uh, the meeting was to thank all the hard work and diligence that uh, Mrs. Wright put into our board yes. as an outgoing member. So uh, I am embarrassed that I didn't bring that up beforehand. She put her heart and soul into this board Absolutely. and all her hard work was, was uh, not for naught. She's done a lot of great things for the board. Uh, let alone the 15 years that she did uh, leading up to our uh, leading up to being a selectman on the planning board and all the other various boards that she uh, that she served on so uh, <coughs> as chair it makes me very proud to be able to thank her um, uh, for all her hard work so. thank you very much sir okay. thank you Claire uh, that said I will entertain a motion to adjourn 45 minutes early so moved second any discussion on that? Okay. All Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? I'm going to abstain. Uh, so moved. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.